In this video, I'm going to review the basic imaging manifestations of an acute ischemic stroke. I'll start off with the non-contrast head CT, talk about what to look for on those. We'll then look at a CT angiogram of the brain, and then I'll end the video looking at the MRI of the brain, and we'll talk about a couple of the important sequences to look at when you're trying to rule out an acute infarct. So the first imaging test that's likely going to come out of the emergency room is a CT of the brain without contrast. This is ordered all the time. Sometimes it's in the setting of trauma, if patients are coming in with altered mental status, or in the case of acute neurologic insults, the non-contrast head CT is convenient, easy to perform, and you can rule out hemorrhage, which is one of the things you want to exclude as a possible diagnosis if you're looking at potentially treating an acute ischemic stroke. So what I have pulled up here now is a non-contrast CT of the brain, and let's pretend the patient presented with right-sided numbness. So in the setting of right-sided numbness, you want to look at the left side of the brain because the insult to the brain causes symptoms on the other side, and that has to do with where the fibers cross. I'm not going to get into the details of that now, but when I'm thinking about an acute ischemic stroke, what I'm looking at is, first and foremost, that I'm able to differentiate the cortex of the brain from the subcortical white matter. The cortex is the very outer margin of the brain, and I'm pointing at the cortex here. It runs along the brain periphery, right below the cortex, where it's a little bit darker. That's the white matter. You want to be able to differentiate the white matter from the cortex everywhere in the brain. And if you don't see a clear differentiation, that could be because there's an acute ischemic stroke. In the setting of ischemia, there is cytotoxic edema within the cortical neurons. The cytotoxic edema causes swelling, so you may see loss of the sulci, and then the cortex will also get dark in the setting of this swelling. And then you lose that clear differentiation between the two, and that could indicate that there's an acute ischemic stroke. So in this case, this is actually a completely negative head CT, and I wanted to include a normal head CT first because within the first six hours particularly, you may not see anything on the head CT in terms of an acute infarct, a lot of times those initial scans are going to be negative and you have to rely on further imaging, be it perfusion, CTA, or MRI to definitively rule in or rule out a stroke. So this is a normal head CT. The gray-white differentiation is maintained. There's not a dense middle cerebral artery. There's not a loss of an insular ribbon sign. We'll get to all those things in just a second. So I have a new case pulled up here and this is a positive case. So there is going to be a finding or two on this study. Let's suppose in this case, the patient presented with right-sided weakness. So as you're scrolling through, you're gonna to want to be looking at the left side of the brain. So I'm gonna stop at this image here and point something out to you. This part of the brain right here is called the insula. This is the insular cortex. Notice how it's bright. And then this is the white matter tract here called the external capsule. So look at this side. Can you definitively differentiate the external capsule from the insular cortex? The answer is no, and this is the loss of the insular ribbon sign, and this is a classic finding in the case of an acute left middle cerebral artery stroke. And as I'm scrolling through, you may also notice that this vessel right here is dense. This is a dense left middle cerebral artery. As you're going through the other side, notice how you don't see that same density within the vessel. That's because there's thrombus in this vessel. So there are two findings of an acute stroke here, the dense middle cerebral artery, as well as the loss of the insular ribbon sign, meaning you can't really differentiate the cortex from the external capsule, which is a white matter structure. So I have another case pulled up here and I'm just gonna start scrolling through to let you get a sense of what could be wrong. And then I'll stop on this image here. And notice again, there's a dense vessel here. We had it on the last case with the insular ribbon, but this could be the only finding that you see on a non-contrast head CT. And I will say it's not all the time. It's actually a pretty rare finding. You don't see it a lot in the setting of an acute infarct, but this could be the very first thing that you see. And if you have a patient where they don't have a good history, they haven't really done a good neurologic exam, if you see this, if you see a dense vessel, at least bring up the idea of a possible stroke and suggest a CT angiogram, which is something we're going to look at next. But this dense vessel could be the only thing that's wrong on a head CT. So definitely don't miss it if you see it. It's a really important finding. So I have a new case pulled up. This is a patient with right-sided symptoms. This is a CTA, meaning scanning was performed in the arterial phase when the vessels within the brain are well opacified by injected contrast. So as you can see, the vessels of the brain, these bright structures are all nice and bright. That's because there's contrast in them. And the point of this study is to look for a cutoff in the vessel where there is a thrombus that can potentially be taken out by a interventional radiologist. So as we're scrolling through, I'm going to first focus on the normal side. So this is the middle cerebral artery here. This is the right middle cerebral artery. Notice how it's bright. And then as you're scrolling through, there's not a cutoff in the vessels. It's contiguous. There's contrast. 
everywhere and there's not just a clear cutoff where there's a thrombus where the contrast can't pass. Now let's focus our attention to the other side. So here's the beginning of the left middle cerebral artery here. It's nice and bright. And then notice this abrupt transition from contrast in this part of the vessel to this part of the vessel that you can still see. There, there's no arterial contrast really. That's because there's a thrombus in here that's blocking blood flow and that's what's caused the patient's stroke. And this study, this CTA, is a really important study for the ER doctors and the interventional radiologists because if a patient has an acute infarct and the hemisphere that is affected of the brain is not entirely dead, meaning that there is salvageable neurologic tissue, salvageable brain tissue, the neurointerventionalist can go in and take out that clot and potentially restore the patient's neurologic function, potentially back to their baseline if they get to the clot soon enough, or at least close to the baseline. But that's why the CTA is important. The point of it is to find an occlusion in a vessel where you can actually take out the clot. And I'll say that if the occlusion is more distal in the vessels that are much more far away from these proximal large vessels, the interventionalist can't get to it. So really this study is useful in finding large vessel occlusions. CTAs are also good for finding aneurysms, but in this case, we have a large vessel occlusion, which I'll circle again here. And this is a reason to call neurointerventional radiology because they can potentially take out this clot. The decision whether or not to actually go in and do that has to do with how much of the brain has already died. That's where CT perfusion comes into play. I'm not gonna talk about perfusion imaging here. A lot of that has to do with clinical status, if the patient's on anticoagulation, there's just a lot of different things and sometimes it varies on the interventionalist. But this patient is a potential candidate to have this clot taken out. So now I have a brain MRI pulled up. MRI is the gold standard if you wanna answer the question, stroke or not, acute infarct or not. The answer is an MRI brain without contrast. It's actually an easy exam to do. It doesn't take that long. Of course, MRI requires the patient to stay very still. MRI is very susceptible to artifact, particularly motion artifact. So in this case, we've got an MRI pulled up and the first sequence that I'm gonna go through is the diffusion weighted imaging. If you are not a radiologist and you're waiting on the radiologist to read one of your studies, but you wanna know if your patient had an acute infarct, just go to the DWI sequence. This is the very best sequence, the most sensitive sequence to rule in or rule out an acute infarct. So I've got the DWI pulled up and what you're looking for is exactly what we have here. If you see hyperintensity, of the brain on DWI, that could suggest, it does not mean for sure, and I'll clarify what I'm talking about in just a second, the hyperintensity could suggest an acute infarct. Anytime you look at a DWI, you have to also look at the ADC. So I've got the ADC sequence pulled up, and notice we basically see the same finding, but it's kind of the opposite. What I mean to say is that on DWI, you're looking for hyperintensity, and if something is hyper intense on DWI, there needs to be corresponding hypo intensity or darkness on the ADC map. The ADC is kind of the opposite sequence of the DWI. There's a lot of intricate physics things that go into this that I personally still am trying to learn and understand, but if something is truly diffusion restriction or an acute infarct, it should be bright on DWI and dark on ADC. So if you see brightness on DWI and you wanna know if it's a stroke, you then need to go to the ADC sequence, which will come with any MRI of the brain. On ADC, you'll see what you see here, and that's darkness corresponding to the hyperintensity on the DWI. So I'll go back to the DWI. Notice that it's hyperintense. It's a left middle cerebral artery territory. Then when we go to the ADC, it's dark, and that means that there's true diffusion restriction, and true diffusion restriction a lot of times means acute infarct. There are some other things that can diffusion restrict, tumors, abscesses, some other things that we're not gonna get into. But in this case, this is a stroke. It's bright on DWI and it's dark on ADC. And that's how you can confirm that there's a stroke. You can also see strokes on other sequences. Flare is also a good sequence to look at a stroke. This is a T2 weighted sequence where you suppress the CSF. Notice that there is gyral swelling, meaning the brain is swollen. You can't really see the sulci. Like you see over here, these crevices between the brain parenchyma. You don't see that here. That's because the brain is swollen. You can also tell this brain is swollen because if you look at the left lateral ventricle, notice how compressed it is compared to the right lateral ventricle, which is much more normal in caliber. Because of all this swelling in this part of the brain here, you're having mass effect on the ventricle, which is causing it to become compressed. So there you have it. That is my review of the acute ischemic stroke in the different imaging studies where you can identify the abnormalities. Again, remember that just because a CT of the brain is negative, that does not mean that the patient hasn't had a stroke, particularly within the first six hours. If you really wanna know if the patient's had a stroke, go to that DWI sequence and then look at your ADC, and then you can confirm whether or not your patient's had a stroke. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope this was helpful, and see you in the next video.